the Miami Dolphins somehow managed to pull off a win in Week 1 against the Jacksonville Jaguars, but let's be honest here, it wasn't pretty. You'd think a victory would feel good, but this one felt more like dodging a bullet than anything else. There were a lot of moments in that game where it felt like Miami was about to let it slip right through their fingers. Yet, in the end, they eked out a 20-17 win, thanks to Jacksonville's mistakes as much as their own plays. Let's talk about that near disaster from Jacksonville's Travis Etienne. The guy was inches away from sealing the game for the Jags with what should have been a sure touchdown. He was right there practically walking into the end zone, when out of nowhere, the ball slipped out of his hands like a bar of soap. Just like that, the Dolphins were still alive. And who else but Tyreek Hill to turn the tables? On the very next play, boom, Hill breaks loose for an 80-yard touchdown. The entire stadium felt that shift. It was like the game flipped in an instant, going from, oh no, we're gonna lose to hold on, we might actually win this. That wasn't the only break Miami got. Jacksonville, for some reason, decided to go for it on 4th and 1, deep in their own territory. They don't convert. And just like that, Miami is gifted another opportunity. Jason Sanders? Yeah, he missed the field goal after that, which felt like a missed chance to really swing momentum. But still, it was clear, Jacksonville was giving Miami life. These are the moments that define a game, and while the Dolphins weren't firing on all cylinders, they found a way to hang in there. Here's the thing, though. If we're being real, Miami didn't exactly dominate. In fact, they struggled for most of the game. Jacksonville's defense was all over them. The Dolphins' offense, which we know can be explosive, was sluggish. They couldn't get much going in the running game, which is a huge problem. There's a lot to be concerned about, especially with how that offensive line performed. Losing key guys like Connor Williams and Robert Hunt in the offseason? Yeah, it's starting to show. This line? It's not holding up. Sunday's crew, Liam Eichenberg and Robert Jones, didn't inspire much confidence. Tua Tagovailoa was under pressure, and the running backs barely found any room to operate. Miami only managed 81 rushing yards on 25 attempts. That's barely anything. If you're going to rely on the passing game every single time, well, that's not a recipe for long-term success. Sure, Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle bailed them out with some big plays, but that's not always going to work. We've seen Mike McDaniel's offense take off before, but it felt like Jacksonville was a step ahead. It's too early to say teams have fully figured out how to stop Miami's attack, but if they keep having games like this, people are going to start asking questions. You can't just rely on Tua's arm and the speed of your wideouts forever. At some point, you have to establish the ground game, and right now, the Dolphins don't seem capable of doing that. And let's be real, this offensive line is an issue. Tua needs protection, and if he's not getting it, that's bad news for everyone. We all know his injury history. He can't keep taking hits. The line needs to step up, and they need to do it fast. If this becomes a trend, it's going to be a long season. On the bright side, yeah, Miami walked away with the win. But it's hard to be too excited about it when you think about what could have happened. Without those mistakes from Jacksonville, who knows what the outcome would have been. You can't count on the other team messing up every week. If this game showed anything, it's that Miami's got a lot of work to do. They need to clean things up, especially along the offensive line, and figure out how to get that running game going. 